This is regarding what you might call twisted scripture. Not sure what I'm going to call it yet. I know it's kind of cliche, but it is true. Scripture does get twisted. And not necessarily out of an evil desire or intention. It's just translations are imperfect. They get twisted. They get twisted up. And I can look at different translations of the Bible and some I like in this area and some I like in another. And I don't believe that's just some arbitrary decision I make. I believe it's the spirit in me that shows where the different translations are more accurate in this area and less in that. I don't read from the King James a lot these days because it's archaic and a lot of people have problems with certain things about it. And there's certain parts of it where it's one of the few versions that ever says it like it is. And I want to talk about a scripture regarding that today. And that's about the person of our God. He always existed eternally as the one true and living God. And the Son of God is His manifestation. That one true God being manifested in the flesh as the man Christ Jesus. That's what it means to be the Son of God. The Son of His love as Paul put it in Colossians 1.13. He manifested His love into the world by coming into the world as one of us. To do what one of us had to do, but one of us never could do. So he became one of us. The scripture I want to go to is in Romans chapter 1, verse 3. But to give it context, I'm just going to read from the beginning. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. The key I want to focus on here is the word made. It does mean made. It never means born. Although in just about every other version besides the modern King James, which takes out that archaic language, they always say born. Or most commonly say born. But it does not mean born. It means made. And Paul also speaks in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. He said, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. So we know that word has been twisted to make it be born. It is not born. It is made. He was made. He fashioned himself into a man in order to do what only God could do. The eternal God. The one and only true God. That is why he is not ashamed to call us brothers. That's another scripture. Hebrews 2.12. Actually it's Hebrews 2.11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause... He is not ashamed to call them brethren. He's not ashamed to call you his brother if you believe in who he is. You believe that it is your God who personally came here to give himself for you. There's only one who can sanctify you. And that's your God. There's only one who can forgive you. Either that or you have two saviors. You have two people who forgave you. Or God didn't forgive you. Or one of the persons of God didn't forgive you. But we know this was a one person operation. Only one can forgive sins. And that is God. Only one can sanctify. Only one can justify. That is God. So you can be God's child. The son of God. And also his brother. That's part of the beauty of it. We need these things in our life. And we have in human form. They're imperfect versions. And he offers us the perfect version of the brother I need. The perfect version of the father I need. The perfect version of the teacher I need. The master, the Lord, the only creator, the only wise God. That's Jesus. He's the only one. So I just wanted to bring that up. That is a twisting of scripture to make that say born. He was not born in that way. God was born into the world, yes. 
But in this context, when he says, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, again, there's only one Lord. There's only one. And because Jesus Christ is our Lord, it does not mean God is not our Lord. And we do not have multiples of Lords. We have one Lord, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in us all. That's Jesus, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So he's talking about one person and one thing. God promised David that he would sit on David's throne. He himself would sit on David's throne. That's spoken of in the Psalms. That according to the flesh, David's seed would bring about God's kingdom. It wasn't David's son according to the flesh. As in Solomon or any of the kings that followed after that, that were born after. It was David's son as in God according to his lineage. He simply used that lineage to confirm the promise that he made to David. He made a promise. When God makes a promise, you better believe that he is going to keep it. As it says in 1 John 2.25, And this is the promise that he has promised us. Eternal life. I went through a study on that. How that is all speaking about one person. So that's why John could just say, He promised us. Who promised us? God promised us. He fulfilled it by coming here in the flesh to save us. That's why life is in the Son. Because to believe in the Son is to believe in God. It's connected to His action. He took an action on your part. He became a man. He became the Christ, the Savior of the world. So when you believe in that, that promise is fulfilled. He fulfilled His promise by becoming the one, the only one who could save us. And he offers that to you. You can believe it or reject it. He finished his part of it. Your only part is to observe it, study it, think about it, pray on it, seek it. But once you find the truth, then you've got to believe it. There's no doing on your part. This is a one-person operation. He completed it. It is finished. God made himself into that man to come here for you, for me, for all of us, to offer all of us salvation. And if you believe that, you are saved. And God did that by himself. Another scripture I like, if I can remember that one, Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged us of our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That man did that by himself. The one who is the express image of God. The very brightness of God's glory. He did that. That's who Jesus is. Believe in that and have a freedom you can't get anywhere else. Not in any theology, any doctrine, any religion, any denomination, any tradition of man or rudiment of the world. It's only in Him. That's why Jesus is everything. I cannot say that strongly enough. Find out what that means. That is not just life altering. That is a new life. That is life itself. Life eternal. In Jesus name. Amen.